Hello, everyone. This is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today, I'm joined by Sean Linden, the writer, director, and producer of the all-new outdoors thriller Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter is available on video on demand on December 18th, so you can check it out then. Uh, we're going to talk to Sean in just a second, but first, let's check out that trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, it'd be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. This is a hard life. You chose it, and it suits you. I chose it when I chose you. Renee never had a choice. What do you do if you see something? Don't run. The wolf is back. Ate a raccoon and left the paw. This isn't a normal wolf. It's just a hungry wolf looking for an easy meal. I will catch it. What if we can't make it out before the freaks? We don't run from our troubles. You want to snag a wolf? You got out wolf him. Hey, Sean. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Excellent. How, hi, how are you? I'm good. It's, I'm very sorry about that. It's uh, I, the, the last one just uh, ended right on time. Oh, perfect. Well, uh, you're actually early, so this uh, this works out. I'll get a few oh, extra perfect. minutes. <laughs> I'll try to end uh, right on time, too. So thank you so much for joining. This is uh, Sean Linden, the writer, director, and producer of the all-new outdoor thriller Hunter Hunter. Uh, so I, I like the beard. I expected maybe like a more rugged beard, maybe like a camouflage or something, uh, you know, yeah. when you joined on. But uh, yeah, so I guess what what inspired this movie? It, it's an interesting kind of outdoor thriller. Are you like, a, are you an outdoorsman? Are you? Um, are, no, is... I'm, I'm strictly ornamental. I'm, I, I have very few practical utility or, or, or practical purposes. Okay, awesome. So then I guess where did this, uh, you know, where did this story come from? Uh, it came from a few different ideas and inspirations and things like that. A lot of it, the, 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 it, the original seed of it was from an image or, or just from the sight of something that I was, I was at a, a film festival in Germany for my first movie back in 2007 and kind of got uh, a snowstorm had kept us down on the ground and, and uh, having to, to ride it out and, I had to take a bus trip through a, a set of really creepy woods and that image uh, over the course of four hours or five hours wound up becoming the central point in the, in the story of Hunter x Hunter. Um, now the, the movie had originally, you know, it's 11 or 12 years old and the movie was originally something quite different but still had the heart that it has right now the 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 essentially the spine of the of the story but um after that it just it it becomes kind of a mix of a whole bunch of influences part of it like the 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 idea for hunter hunter was to be a a, a fairy tale about predators um so it was really influenced a lot of from you know Grimm's fairy tales the things that are kind of periodically horrific and and a bit absurd and you know the the idea that or or my ambivalence on of um uh, with meat and eating meat that had a really big part of 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 the development of the script i i love eating meat but i also love animals and i can't really reconcile those two uh things inside of me um so yeah, it's just a kind of a a bunch of different influences that that shaped that original idea that was that was conceived back in two thousand seven. And I love that you mentioned that the uh, that the heart and the spine of the of the story is still in there because it could be the figurative heart and spine. It could be the literal heart and the spine of the story because there's there is definitely that uh, that in this movie. Um, and I, I really liked your point about eating me because I think that that's you know, this film has such a great sense of authenticity. You know, you've got, 
the, the, the realistic traps, the, the skinning of the animals, the preparing of them. Uh, you even have like the, the, the using of 22 to make sure that they don't destroy the fur when they, you know, when they take out the animal. So, um, and, and yeah, the, the scenes where they're preparing meals were, were kind of striking and how realistic they were. And, you know, so I guess, uh, how, did you do the research for this? Did you have a specialist come in and help out with, uh, with some of this authenticity? And how did you go about creating such realistic looking, you know, game and preparation? It was, uh, it was tons of research. I'd, I'd not been a hunter previously or, or hadn't been hunting before. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a ton of research. Uh, and and of consulting with actual trappers. I've got friends who have relatives who are trappers, so I was able to go down there and, you know, take a look at their shacks and the kind of things that they have lying around. And I was interested in, in kind of the little boring bits that are all in between the significant bits that just lend an, an invisible authenticity to everything. It, it It's those little, you know, the little tiny details that, that really makes the whole thing um, seem plausible without looking like overt attempts at, at, at making a stab at it. Um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lot of research and a lot of consultation with, with real hunters of just making sure that if a hunter were to see this, they would not be completely like, that's wrong, you know. <laughs> uh, this is a really interview, easy interview because you're just kind of flowing right into my next questions. Because my next question was <laughs> going to be, it was really kind of striking to see this, you know, low tech lifestyle, for lack of a better word, kind of a low tech outdoors lifestyle, um, you know, in kind of our modern world, especially when people are, are, are locked down and probably, you know, enjoying their modern conveniences. And, and uh, my question was going to be, you know, are, are there people that do still live like this? And it sounds like there are, which is, which is, you know, interesting. It must be a very interesting experience to go there and kind of see how they survive these things that we've just all kind of taken for granted. Well, the the timeless quality it's that's that goes back to a bit to the again the fairy tales uh, or the the fairy tale influence on it. You know, it's got the the burly woodsman, the big bad wolf, and the enchanted forest, and it's kind of a damsel in distress. Although you can't really call. I would never call Camille a damsel in distress. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's when you look at them right now in the modern times, none of them are that far disconnected because it is um, unfeasible to make a, a living um, uh, just uh, dealing with, with furs. And again, that that's, goes back to the problem that they have in the film as well, that it's, that it's just not doable anymore, but people will have, they'll have trapping shacks uh, or trapping cabins that they'll go out to. And most of it is done not for profit, but for, you know, for meat or for the experience or just to stay connected with that process. Um, but yeah, it's not really, a way of life that's sustainable in these days. And there's a bit of a tragedy to that. And there, it, it, there's another part of it that, that makes sense. So it's all just kind of that it's that, that those two, you know, that idea there that, that, um, that provided the, the context for the, the family dynamic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that, that did seem like a really tough lifestyle is kind of watching them do these day-to-day -day tasks that we would just, you know, turn on a faucet, you get water, whereas Camille had to hike down to the river and carry it back and, you know, make sure to stay stable so she doesn't uh, drip anything. That was a, uh, those, those are really interesting to see. Uh, and speaking of Camille, I really loved how this, this film felt like a, you know, kind of a coming of age or, you know, kind of a, a journey of self-discovery for uh, both Camille and Summer's characters. Uh, and you mentioned this film was kind of a long time coming. Was it, was it kind of always, did it always have that spine in, in the story or was that just something that developed when you kind of wrote out the characters and maybe met the actors and whatnot? Well, it's the, one of the big themes in the story is, is how we pass down information. Uh, you know, they're, they, uh, the the husband comes from a long line of 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 traditional hunting, and so he's passing that kind of knowledge down um, to his his family, um, even at a point where 
uh, that knowledge isn't as useful as it was when when even he got it. Um, but yeah, it's the 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 passing down of knowledge was necessary. I I can't really give away the ending of the movie. Okay, please please don't. <laughs> but that that passing of knowledge is extremely significant for the for the script. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's that's that's that was that was the idea you just couldn't really make the the that story without without that being a significant through line definitely and uh you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier but this this film had some some very brutal scenes um involving all sorts of of prey um you know i guess it looked like a lot of it was you know i guess traditional effects which is one thing i love seeing in movies you know i guess how did you go about making these very realistic brutal scenes uh, they were they were they were striking to see. We had we had some very good makeup artists, Doug Morrow and, and Aaron Murky, who have a lot of experience doing this stuff. And you know, some of the things that are in the movie are a horror makeup effects artist's dream to do. Mm-hmm. So they're already having a ton of fun and and really willing to go on this. But yeah, the 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 there was there are a lot of deaths in the movie uh, or depictions of death and and it's from animals of all kinds it's not just humans but it's yeah. it's kind of a, a bloody movie to, to animals as well and and to do that you know those practical effects had to be you know it's that stuff's not gore for gore's sake it's it's gore because that's what stuff looks like when you take uh, the skin off of a beaver for example mm-hmm. um, so it it kind of it had to have that um non exploitative quality to it for a lot of it um until shit hits the fan and, <laughs> and becomes a horror movie definitely um, so yeah it's it was all about again trying to go for accuracy of of um when you're when you're uh, breaking down these animals uh at, to to use you know from the tip of their toes to the tip of their nose, using every bit of it, um, what that has to look like, and and you know, again, that's stuff that that adds an air of authenticity to it. No, definitely. Uh, so we've got a few more minutes. I just want to switch into I call it the lightning round. It's just very lightweight questions, uh, you know, that kind of relate to the story and the characters. And I just want to kind of see your experiences versus that. You can feel free not to answer. I try to keep them very answerable, but you can always feel free to pass. Uh, the first question is, have you ever been hunting? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I trap um, crabs once a year, every year since I was younger and have gone fur hunting twice. Interesting. Uh, what is the, the gamiest animal you've ever eaten? Bear. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's an exciting one. Um, are you wearing or, or do you own any fur? I have a beaver um, a collar on my favorite coat, and that's it. Must be very warm. Extremely warm and super dope looking. <laughs> what is the uh, strangest thing you found in the woods or in nature? Uh, we found a bunch of teeth in the cabin. Oh. <laughs> in, yeah, the, in the cabin that we this shot. This cabin? In the, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we had to clean it out. It was a heritage building that, or a heritage cabin that's uh, over a hundred years old. That's nestled in this park. Um, that's that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So who knows what went on during, you know, uh, before we got there? But yeah, yeah. Tea. Wow. All right. That's. Uh, I was not expecting that. That's a great answer. Um, how long do you think that you could survive in nature? Oh, jeez. Depends where, but, <laughs> but um, less time than the average person would be able to, I think. That's a good answer. And finally, just because this is the first thing I thought of when I heard the title, have you, have you seen the anime Hunter x Hunter, Hunter Cross Hunter? Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, and apparently it's, it's, it's confusing a few people, more than a few people. I was, yeah. The movie, again, the script was written back in 2007 and had no idea of, uh, was never aware of the existence of it. And 
by the time I was, um, the movie couldn't have been named anything else. Like if you see the movie, that's yeah. it's Hunter Hunter. Yeah, no, it, it, it took me a bit to get it, but yeah, by the end of the movie, I was like, that's a, that's a great title. And maybe you'll get some, uh, some more, you know, search engine results and things like that from people, you know, searching for and, one and finding the other. So Yeah, well, I hope I'm not upsetting them to that point. Like that wasn't, uh, <laughs> that wasn't the intention and, and anime has a lot of passionate fans. So, you know, I apologize if that's, if that makes them, although it seems to me like kind of if your name's like, Fergus, and you see somebody else that's named Fergus, is like, yeah, screw that guy. It's like, what? It's just the name. It's not, yeah. not judging. It's you're just judging one word. So it has nothing to do with the cartoon. <laughs> from what I understand, thematically, is not even dealing with the same stuff. So. Or watch it and find out. Maybe it does. Maybe yeah. you know, all the all the anime fans out there. Maybe it does. We'll find out. Uh, so no, <laughs> we're no, at. No, come find me. <laughs> Come find me. Uh, so, so we're at time. So, thank you so much for joining me. This is uh, Sean Linden, the the writer, director, and producer of the all new outdoor thriller Hunter Hunter, not Hunter Cross Hunter, Hunter Hunter. Uh, it's available on digital on demand on December eighteenth. Uh, so, you should definitely check it out. It's it's interesting. It's 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 got a, a lot of brutal scenes and a lot of kind of striking depictions of nature. So, it's it's definitely an interesting one to watch. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me, David. Right. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. That was Sean Linden, the writer, director, and producer of the all-new outdoor thriller Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter is available digitally on December 18th, so you can check it out then and remember what it was like when we could go outdoors and, and spend time in nature. Maybe you're doing that anyways to try to social distance. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot to make sure all my new videos go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you.